Good evening, fetuses. If you're anything like me, you have spent way too much time studying story structure. There's like a million different story structures in Beat Sheets and they all say pretty much exactly the same thing. It's like the hero's journey, the heroine's journey, Blake Snyder saved the cat. And they're frustrating because they all just pretty much list the plot points and expect you to go from there. But they're useful, don't get me wrong, they're really useful. But I'm still gonna give them a makeover. There's still one thing I desperately need to talk about. To understand my problem with all of these uh, beat sheets and story structures, you have to understand one thing, the midpoint turn. Most of them do have a midpoint turn, but there are some like Dan Harmon's Story Circle and The Fictian Curve that don't have a midpoint turn, and it's like, okay, just be wrong then. Whatever, that's your prerogative. But I'm gonna talk about the ones that specifically do have a midpoint turn. What's midpoint turn, precious? The midpoint turn is the point at which your character's goals, your character's choices, and your story in general are turned on their head. The story goes from the character thinking one way, they want this one thing, and then the midpoint turn is they get it, but then they realize, oh, it's wrong, and they don't actually want what they have. It's when your character makes a choice or has a realization that pretty much makes the story up to that point like completely ridiculous and unable to go forward. You can turn to the exact middle of any movie and find the midpoint turn. It's either a shocking revelation or a choice that the character makes that completely overhauls the story. Almost every beat sheet has a section for the midpoint turn. Blake Snyder calls this the false victory or the false defeat. Seven Axe and Save the Cat both call this just the midpoint. In the heroine's journey, Maureen Murdoch calls this number six, initiation and descent into the goddess. The script lab calls this the first culmination. Freytag's pyramid calls this the climax. And the hero's journey calls this tests, allies, and enemies. My problem with these beat sheets is that they don't account for what happens after the midpoint turn. Yes, there's a plot point and there's plot elements, but the midpoint turn is about a character's choice or realization. Character is one of the three pillars that make up your story, as I talk about here in the 3.5 fold method. There needs to be a specific plot point in these beat sheets that tell us the fallout or the consequences of the midpoint turn, which is why I'm calling this video consequences. So what are consequences? Up until this point, your character has been operating under the assumption that the things that they know and the things that they're doing are the right things to know and do. That the things that they know are all that they need to know. That the things that they're doing are going to work out. That the way that they have to beat the bad guy is the only way that it's gonna happen. But the consequences are everything that happens after this belief is turned on its head. The midpoint turn tells us that the character is operating in the wrong way. What they've gotten up to this point is not what they want, is not right for them. And they need to adapt with the new knowledge they have now after getting what they want. So in most of these beat sheets, it's just called the bad guys close in section, which is mainly phrased as the antagonist moving against the protagonist, which is, the outside forces closing in as opposed to the character's decisions driving the story from that point onward. Most of these beat sheets focus on the antagonistic force and not the direct result of a character making a choice or realizing something. So how can this be put into action? So glad you asked. I'll give you an example from my story and then one from a movie, okay? Hold on to your horses. In my novel, Daughter of the Valley, my character Crystal spends the majority of the first half of the novel thinking of ways to defeat the Haven Pack. She thinks that somebody else is going to solve this problem. She thinks that she can just go to someone and be like, okay, well, you were big in the hierarchy back in the day. Please help me with this pack. But they all say to her, no, we're not in that lifestyle anymore. We don't know how to do it. We can't defeat a whole pack. We're not strong enough. We're just individual people. We have lives, we have families. We're not into inter-pack drama anymore. 
it soon becomes clear that the support system she had when her father was alive and before she left Fortitude no longer exists. And when she has this realization, she then makes a choice. She makes the choice to step up and be the one that takes down the Haven Pack, regardless of how she doesn't have any resources or at least doesn't have the resources that she had back then and she doesn't have the support that she had back then. From then on, the story stops being about Crystal fighting for her life and then becomes about her going on the attack and seeking out the Haven Pack to stop them. Bear in mind, I wrote this in 2020, so my storytelling skills were not as precise and sophisticated as they are now but it's still a pretty good read and you can get it for 2.99 Australian dollars on my store link down below. Let's look at another example. Let's look at Nope because it was the first file that I went to on my computer when I was writing this script. And if you haven't seen this film, pause this video, go watch it now, come back in two hours, changed you will be changed as a person. So Nope is a sci-fi western that's set in some, some desert in America somewhere. OJ and M. Haywood are a brother and sister duo who train horses to use in films. The main themes of this film are animal exploitation and spectacle. And they are embodied by characters who have a deep love and kinship with horses and animals. The midpoint turn of this film is when OJ realizes that his neighbor, Dupe, is using horses to feed Jean Jacket, the alien, which provides the spectacle for his shows, bringing these two themes together. The midpoint turn is both a realization, Dupe feeding the horses, realized by OJ, and a choice, OJ going to free the horses. Freed his horses. <laughs> Freed his horses. <laughs> someone wrote down a list of of sayings that their dad said that just that he just made up and one of them was freed his horses like he died he freed his horses i have remembered that for about 10 fucking years honestly why do i keep these things in my memory but i can't even remember what freytag's pyramid is despite having studied it the consequences of this midpoint turn is that OJ and M, with the help of Angel and Antlers, decide to capture a picture of Jean Jacket to sell. Because... I, I don't actually know why. Like, I'm sure if I watched it again it would make more sense, but I haven't seen this movie in like a, a year at least, and it, it doesn't make sense to me that characters who are all about stopping animal exploitation would exploit an animal for profit? even though that's the whole point of the movie is not to do that because it always ends badly. So like, I, I know that Jordan Peele does everything for a reason, and, but the only reason I can think of is it's an Aesop's fable or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to watch the movie again. It, he had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Okay, that's it for this video. Where's my drink? So hopefully by the time that this drops, I'll have kind of mastered the art of consistency on my channel. I know I've been really inconsistent because I kind of oscillate wildly between not giving a shit about YouTube and also wanting to make this into another source of income. I'm like a ping pong ball on crack. I actually do wanna make this kind of an income source, even if it's not my main job or anything like that. I have two jobs already, I have a business. I'm totally fine with that. At the moment, I've only got about 60 full length videos and like three shorts or something, which I'm gonna take down because I fucking hate shorts. Oh, they just clog up my channel. But I'm gonna be spending more time on things like my Substack, books on my channel, while also having my two jobs. That's a full course of action, is what that is. I hope it works out. I mean, hopefully by the time I post this, I'll have had a few Tuesdays worth of um, stuff banked up. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's it. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>